Happy Tuesday, Grace Covenant. I hope that you are hanging in there, holding up, that you are finding grace and finding peace, finding ways to grow and discover life-giving things that are around you and within you in these days. It's April 28th and we are probably not anywhere near being done with social distancing or quarantining or stay-at-home orders. And I know a lot of what we've been talking about these last several weeks on devotionals is just ways to get grounded, right? ways to be present, ways to find Christ and, and stay connected to what is life-giving in all of this. And I guess I wonder today what... What else there might be for us to explore in terms of the life of faith in these times? Um, it is important to stay grounded and to tap into the peace that passes understanding, to, to be present to things that delight us and things that give us life. And it's also really important to to sit with difficult feelings as well, to not always be positive, to sometimes give room to feelings that are more complicated. Um, what does that mean in this time of um, physical distancing and quarantine to, to sit with some of the difficult feelings that we're having and let them have some oxygen. Let them speak to us. I've been thinking a lot lately um, for various reasons about how avoiding things can, can even create um, toxicity. Like, can keep us from the full magnitude of joy that our life has to offer. In other words, if we're spending energy being trying to be positive on not dealing with difficult feelings, then we're not really experiencing the full magnitude of the optimism and the joy. It seems like faith is, is different than that. And also, courage is different than that. Um, courage isn't the absence of fear, it's the ability to keep going in the midst of fear. Um, and faith is not thinking positively all the time. It's the ability to believe and to, to trust when you cannot see, when there isn't a, a reason to feel that way. And I've been thinking about some of the complicated things that that this experience has brought on for me and for us and i think some of some of the things that it's brought on are just kind of having to look at the way we do things having to look at the way we live with a critical eye um having to really interrogate ourselves about what we're afraid of, what we're anxious about. Um, it ta I've noticed it just takes a lot of time for things to kind of shed away and make room for you to even be able to do that. In other words, our busyness, our, our schedules, our calendars are all ways maybe that keep us going and keep us functioning, but they can also keep us distracted 
from the things that we really don't want to deal with. And I think about how the invitation to sit with some complicated feelings is not one that we can accept if we don't have support around us and we don't have support within us. Um, and so the whole leap of faith and sitting with difficult feelings is trusting that God supports that action, that God actually is inviting us into that work and that you're not jumping off a cliff to do it, but that you are actually relaxing into God's love, that God wants you to deal with this stuff so that so that you can be fully alive. So I wonder what what that is for you and what that is for me. The difficult feelings um, that God is inviting you to to sit with, to not be afraid of, to not avoid, to not um, to not reject off hand. Um, one of the metaphors that's been helpful for me lately is when that kind of sense of avoidance or I don't have time to deal with that or that's going to be too hard comes up, that I visualize that not as a wall, but as a little speed bump so that it's something that's slowing me down for a minute to kind of check in be careful with my next step, be intentional, but not to stop, not to let that be a reason that makes me turn around and go back to the distraction or whatever it was that um, was keeping me from that. So all that is to say is that I wonder if today or tomorrow or sometime this week might be an opportunity for you to to sit with an emotion and let it a, a difficult emotion and let it have a little bit more room let it speak to you maybe instead of shaming yourself for having it you say what is it that you want to tell me maybe you could even write a letter to that emotion Dear Anger, why are you hanging around so much? What is it that you want me to know? What is it that I need to pay attention to? Or Dear Grief, I feel like you've really been trying to get my attention lately and I've been ignoring you. What is it that you need to tell me? Or maybe you have another way of sitting with it. Maybe it's breath. Maybe it's stretching, noticing, maybe it's art, maybe it's a walking prayer, maybe it's calling somebody you trust and saying, I don't know what I'm talking about, I just need to say this stuff out loud to somebody that won't use it against me, or somebody that won't um, try to ask me a lot of questions. I just need somebody to hold this with me for a minute. And that's kind of where my heart is today in terms of how to maximize the, the growth, the joy, the vitality that can come out of a difficult time is to, to not push the complicated emotions away, but to let them breathe so that you're not using your energy when you're trying to feel optimistic to push that down but actually welcoming the full magnitude of hopefulness and faith that comes from really having tapped into the hard parts too. There's actually some brain science to back this up in terms of optimism and worst case scenarios and how important it is to actually think about what worst case scenarios and, and let yourself think through 
the ways that you would deal with that. Um, and while it is scary and while it is painful, I am finding there, that there are gifts there. And I'm grateful for the way God accompanies all of us when we need to walk through those valleys. So blessings to you. Remember, you're not alone. Um, the psalm for this week is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures and walk by still waters. God restores my soul. May it be so. Amen.